Good morning, Vietnam. I always wanted to do that. Today, one of us is going to try and live on the Vietnamese minimum wage, which is about $6.61 a day. And the other one of us is going to get the same salary that top executives make here in Vietnam. I thought because we're in Vietnam, the person who speaks Vietnamese better should get the top salary. It's a tonal language with six tones, so the same word can mean six different things. Whoever can say, I want a lot of money in Vietnamese and be understood by the translator gets the top executive salary. I'm sure I can do it. Let me try. Delicious banana has many cups. That's exactly what I wanted to say, by the way. I want to eat fried rice. <laughs> Look, that's also useful. I do want to watch YouTube. That's great. I want to be treated like a fairy. I'll start tomorrow. I'm sorry that I've been treating you badly all this time. Just go. Delicious bananas have many stories. What am I doing wrong? Everything. Everything. I want to eat your rights like war. Honestly, at this point, I just don't believe we'll ever get it. Yes, look. I'm so happy. I really wouldn't be able to do it on six dollars. Here is uh, your. Six dollars. Good luck to you and don't forget, I love you. Bye bye. This sucks. I can't believe I'm the one with the minimum wage again. And it's only six dollars and sixty-one cents. That's like the, the day wage. It's less than the hourly minimum wage in the USA. Can I even afford a place to stay with that? The cheapest place is four dollars. I don't know if I'm even gonna book a hotel. Maybe I'll just Stay at the bar? I decided to ignore that problem and do the most interesting thing I could find online that was free. See Ho Chi Minh's mausoleum. The entrance felt like going through the airport security. They don't allow the use of selfie sticks especially and I had to hide it in my bag. There were signs with rules posted everywhere. You can't get anywhere near the plants. You're not allowed to chew gum. And so many areas were off limits. This sign said if you break any of the rules, you're going to be escorted from the area by security forces. They take it so seriously because Ho Chi Minh is the father of the country and the number one national hero. You can go inside and see his body, which is very well preserved, but there's zero photography. There's not even pictures on the internet. If you tried to film it, You'd probably get deported. With as much respect as I can possibly communicate, uh, it's just very interesting. Not something that you see a lot. I think there's one in Lenin, one of Mao Zedong, maybe there's one in North Korea. After seeing this, I really understand how much pride Vietnamese people have in their country and their communist roots. Because I'm not broke, I decided to see the most unique show in Vietnam. I had never heard of water puppets before. I got the most expensive front row seat, which was still only $8. They have four shows a day and still the theater was full. I had never seen most of the instruments they used before. At some point, they even played cups. And what they did with puppets was so impressive. The dragons were breathing fire and the puppets were catching fish and dancing. I was really impressed. And I wasn't the only one. Everyone clapped for a long time at the end. I wonder if Thomas gets to do anything interesting with his budget today. There's almost no sidewalks in Hanoi, so you really need a scooter to get around. And after a lot of bargaining, I convinced this guy to give me the worst scooter he had for only $2. It was missing a mirror and it wasn't much to look at. Obviously, it'd been crashed pretty badly before. And the helmet was basically just a plastic baseball cap. But the engine and brakes worked, even if the speedometer didn't. In the name of financial irresponsibility, I decided to get some swag so I would look really cool driving around and I was off It was so much fun zipping around town, but you have to be so alert Hanoi is full of dangers on the road people just flow No one stops and everything jumps out in front of you all the time So keep your fingers at the ready on the brakes a lot of locals don't even stop for red lights I was in some of the craziest traffic jams I've been in in my life and I saw three locals wreck in one day while filming this video I do a lot of risky things, but I always have travel insurance the insurance I've been using for over a year only costs $42 a month and it works in 175 countries and I bought it while I was traveling unlike other budget travel insurance There's a link in the description 
When you have money, you can find any kind of food in Hanoi. But I wanted to try something truly exotic. So I went to try durian, one of the most expensive fruits in the world. This fruit cost me $17, and after opening, I saw only a few pieces of flesh. To defend itself, it is very spiky, and also it smells like a mix of sewage and dirty socks. In fact, it smells so bad and strong, so you can't even take it to your hotel room. Instead, I rented an apartment, so I could eat as much durian as I wanted. This beautiful apartment in the best district was only $33 a night. To eat my durian, I was provided with special gloves. It smelled so bad, but I had to make myself to try it for the experiment. So I took a bite and I was so surprised by the taste. It is like a mix of brie cheese and vanilla custard with a garlic aftertaste. And it is so delicious. My $33 a night apartment felt like an expensive hotel. It even had a very nice gym. But while Hanoi is so budget friendly, I wonder if Thomas can find accommodation with only $6. I looked for a hotel for hours and I got so hungry I decided to stop for some pho at a hole in the wall restaurant that the locals eat that it's only a dollar fifty a bowl finally something in my budget not much for atmosphere but mom and pop know how to do it best it smelled and tasted amazing it was a man-sized portion that gave me the courage to continue and afterwards the waiter offered me his water pipe which is very common in the north almost every restaurant has one and the tobacco is so strong I politely declined most Americans don't know that Vietnam is a socialist republic that's led by the Communist Party and it was very interesting to walk around and see all of the posters and monuments they they even have a park for linen with the only statue of the man in all of Southeast Asia, which the local kids use like a skate park. This is when I started to notice something about Vietnamese culture. There were so many groups of people outside playing together. Kids were chilling or playing with their parents, and it felt like they had a really tight-knit sense of community. No one was alone. Even grandpas were all gathered at the park playing card games, which I'd never seen before, but obviously they'd been there most of the day. And Vietnamese culture is very cohesive. These kids were a part of some after-school program that looked like it was out of the Soviet Union. They were honoring one of their war heroes. As interesting as all of that was, I was getting stressed about the fact I had no place to stay. I am so glad that I'm the one who has budget today and I don't have to struggle like Thomas. So I dressed up to go to the best reviewed Vietnamese restaurant in Hanoi. The place looked and smelled incredible. I got some vegetable spring rolls, stir fried snow fungus, which I've never heard of, and pork belly with quail eggs. The egg had no white. The snow fungus was like eating a loofah, but tasty. And I couldn't believe it when I saw the bill. It was only $13. Because I was struggling so much, I decided to meet up with somebody I know who lives in Hanoi and see how their life Life is here. When I arrived at her address, I couldn't figure out what was going on because I was standing at a coffee shop. But as it turns out, she lives upstairs inside of the coffee shop. We literally walked through the coffee shop and behind the counter to get to her stairs. Five flights of them. I was so winded at the top. But I'm sure it's worth it for the view that she has over the lake. It's one of the nicest central districts of Hanoi. And for this cozy apartment that's so beautiful, she only pays 6.7 million dong or $285 a month. It came fully furnished with AC. The only drawback is that the bed is pretty hard. If you jumped on it, you might break your tailbone. That's normal in Vietnam though. They love rock hard beds. We sat down to talk because I had so many questions about the cost of living for expats here in Vietnam. Thank you so much for doing this with me. Of course. Do you feel like you make more money than locals because you're a foreigner? Yeah, without a doubt. It feels kind of terrible. The fact that the, the place that I was born, the language that I was brought up speaking has allowed me all this opportunity. Well, how much can you make if you come here and you teach English? In the right job, you can earn up to 60 million Vietnamese dong. 2400 almost? Yeah. 40 hours in a school, more than I ever actually earned in England. That's crazy. Yeah. Now that you've been here for a year, what's challenging about living here? Anything? No, not so much. It's become very, <laughs> very normal. I find myself driving through a red light, beeping my horn and thinking, yeah, this is just life. And you, dri you drive around. I do, yeah. Was I that scary at first? Around. Yes. Um, it was petrifying. <laughs> have you ever wrecked the scooter? I have. It wasn't terrible though, and the hospitals here are incredible. So, so did you get some, some scrapes or like? I had swollen ankle, scrapes on my ankle, an infected wound. You said the hospitals are great. Impeccable, yeah. How much did that cost? A little less than a hundred pounds. My work cover insurance. Do you feel like you can be accepted by locals here as a foreigner? Completely? Yes. The more that I've been learning Vietnamese and can communicate in Vietnamese with people, the more accepted I am. How many friends after a year have you, have you made here would you say that you're like, those are my real friends? 
Between 10 and 20. Holy crap. Yeah, there, there's some really good people here. There's so much to talk about. So much of a difference of cultures. Have yeah. you ever had a conflict? No. Do you think that you pay more for things than local people do? Yes, for sure. There's a thing that we call tourist tax. We do earn more, so we do pay a little bit more. I think Fair it's enough. well deserved. We, we deserve to pay it. Yeah. I mean, it's still cheap compared to what, you're, what you would pay in a Western country, right? Exactly, exactly. But now that you're learning Vietnamese, do you see that the prices are maybe coming down a little bit? If I charm the right woman, yes. Okay. We can have a, that is have the, a conversation. The charm. What do you love about your life here the most? Um, it's simple. The job is very fun. I also have a lot of time to do my own thing. So I can afford to do things I could never do in England. You're time rich, uh -huh. right, also. Time rich and, yeah. And you have same, enough money to... Same money. I can afford to take boxing classes. I can afford to learn languages. So I can afford to pursue things that I'm interested in doing, see friends. If you could say anything to the world, what would you say? If you have an urge to travel to Asia, but you feel a bit nervous about it, travel and give it three months at least before you crack. There is a bit of a culture difference. It takes a minute to get used to the busyness and the craziness, but it's, it's very worth it. Thank you, mm -hmm. again. Of course. It's so interesting to me that foreigners make so much more money than locals here. The average wage in Vietnam is only about $300, while the minimum wage is around $200, and the top 25% of executives make around $3,000 a month. So, as an English teacher from a foreign country, you can make more than most executives. All that said, I didn't see a single homeless person while I was there. Everyone seems to have a scooter and they go outside and do things. So you can still have a decent life even without a lot of money in Vietnam. Having an executive salary here in Hanoi feels just great. At the end of the day, I still had some money left, so I decided to try famous Hanoi egg coffee. To make your perfect cup of egg coffee, they take egg yolks and whip them till the point they turn into a yellow cream. It is very thick and sweet, like a dessert. I have never tried the coffee like this before, but I really liked it. After an extremely long day of trying to travel in a chaotic city with almost no money, I was so hungry. Pho was tasty, but there wasn't that many calories. I wanted something with some meat, so I went looking around for local food. And there was a lot of interesting dishes, most of which I couldn't afford, like frogs, pigeon, and almost every kind of fruit at the market. River snails were in my budget, but they don't look that appetizing and they smell bad. The raw meat cuts were pretty cheap, but there was no place that I could have cooked them. My blood sugar was so low. When I saw these donut balls, I didn't care that they weren't meat. I had to have some. It was only 33 cents for two. I can't say I really like them. They're really thick and way over fried. Whatever this soup was smelled heavenly, but the people who worked there wouldn't sell it to me for whatever reason. Hot pot was four times my remaining budget. I could have had five beers, but I knew that was a terrible idea. But the beer street was happening. It was so crowded, I couldn't even walk. That is, until the police showed up, and then it cleared out really fast. It was empty in a matter of seconds. Finally, I spotted something on the menu that I could afford in this little tiny restaurant. Even the tables and chairs were miniature for me. And I ordered pickled chicken feet. They're soaked in lemongrass, and they're surprisingly tasty, although very crunchy. Some bites were much crunchier than others, but it filled me up, which I was grateful for because I was completely out of money, which left me with a real dilemma. Either be homeless all night, which I didn't even think was an option because I didn't see any homeless people, or admit that I failed, but I knew Nasty would never let me hear the end of it. It's been hours walking around. Honestly, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't wanna be homeless tonight. That'd be the worst. I stopped at the park and watched people dancing, and I realized that if I asked someone, probably a Vietnamese person would have hosted me. But I'm not a big packer, and I'm not going to promote that here. And honestly, I missed Nastia. All of the couples looked so happy dancing together. Feeling depressed and a bit lonely, I decided to accept my fate. I guess I'm giving up. I swallowed my pride and decided to text her. Yeah, I need help at this point. But I knew that she wasn't gonna take it easy on me. Who is it? It's me! No, you're not supposed to be here. Please, just open the door already. Okay. Thanks, I appreciate that. Good morning, cheater. <laughs> Look, I didn't want to be homeless last night. Thanks for letting me in. You're welcome. Even though cheater. I had to knock like eight times. <laughs> Well, it's safe to say I failed at the mission. I personally can't live on the Vietnamese minimum wage, 
but it seems like everyone does. I didn't see a single homeless person yesterday. Everyone I saw seemed really happy. They were with their friends and family. They're going out and doing free stuff together in the park and events. And, you know, it feels in Vietnam like happiness isn't really about money and achievement as much. I don't recommend that you come here and try and live on the minimum wage. You can definitely come here and make much more money if you want to and live a great life, but don't come be a broke backpacker. Nobody likes that. If you like this video, check out our other video about living on the minimum wage in Bangkok and stay tuned. Next country we're going to is... Philippines! One of us will try and live on the minimum wage hey, there. You. We'll see about that. <laughs> Ciao.